Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your next lesson in analytical geometry. In this lesson we're going to be talking about the inclination of a line. But what is an inclination of a line? Now we know that the gradient is change in y over change in x. So if we have a drawing here of a straight line, we can see that here we've got our line and it's got a change in y over a change in x. And do you see it makes an angle with the x-axis and that angle there is the angle of inclination. It's basically the angle at which this is, the angle it's making with the x-axis. Now, I want you to look at this little triangle here. We can make a triangle by choosing any two points on our straight line. In this case, we have chosen the point 3, 2, sorry, let's try again. We've chosen the point 2, 3, and we've chosen the point 1, 1. So we've chosen two points, but you don't have to worry about that. You just need to realize that we can make a right angle triangle because your x and your y are perpendicular to each other. So therefore, if you look at this, because this line over here is parallel with this line, we can see that this angle here is also theta because of the fact that these two lines are parallel therefore these are corresponding angles so if that's the case if that's the case then do you agree that using trig remember we've got Sokotoa so tan theta is opposite over adjacent which in this case is going to be changing y over changing x changing y over changing x but your changing y over changing x is the gradient so basically what we're saying is that we have got the formula that tan theta equals m tan theta equals m so if we've given the gradient we can find the angle of inclination or if we're given the angle of inclination we can get the gradient. Okay, now let's look at a couple of special scenarios. Let's look at vertical lines. A vertical line has got an angle of inclination of 90 degrees, which makes sense because if this is my y-axis and this is my x-axis and I draw a line that's perpendicular, let's say for example x equals 2, then do you agree that this is perpendicular, perpendicular to the x-axis. So therefore it has an angle of inclination of 90 degrees. Whereas your horizontal line, if I drew a line like this and I just change my color, okay, if for example I have a line up here, okay, at for example 3, do you agree that this is parallel with the x-axis and therefore the angle of inclination is zero? Nice and easy. Let's now look at negative gradients. This here is obviously a negative line for the simple reason that we know that negative gradients go up to the left, okay? So that is a negative gradient, but we can also say, okay, fine, we can see that this angle here is bigger than 90, but smaller than 180. So I'm going to choose, um, I don't know, 130 degrees. So then we say tan of 130 degrees is equal to m and then we'd pop it in our calculator and we'd go let's just clear this we'd go tan of 130 degrees is equal to minus 1.19 so the gradient for this would be minus 1.19 but the reason you have to be careful of this negative gradient is let's say for example you were given the equation that this line is y is equal to and we're just making something up here so let's say it's minus 2x minus 2x um, plus 3. So now we have given been given a gradient of minus 2x and say they want the angle of inclination then do you agree that we'd know that tan of theta is equal to negative 2. Tan of theta is equal to negative 2. So then we get the calculator out again and we go shift tan of bracket negative 2 and please grade 11s again make sure you're always in degrees and we get minus 63.43 we get theta is equal to minus 63.43 degrees which doesn't seem to make sense but what it's done is the calculator has given you the acute 
angle. It has given you this angle here, the size of the acute angle. Okay, and then what you would have to do is subtract that from 180 to get the actual size of theta. Let's do an example. It says determine the angle of inclination for the following. So we've got y is equal to or 2y minus x is equal to 6. 2y minus 6 is equal to minus x is equal to 6. So the first thing we need to do is obviously get this into standard form. So we need to make y the subject of the formula. So we get 2y minus x is equal to 6. Then do you agree 2y is going to be x plus 6? And therefore, we've got y is going to be, we have to get rid of this 2, so we're going to halve it. So it's a half x, we're dividing everything by 2, plus 6 over 2, which is 3. And the only thing we're interested in is this gradient, because they want the angle of inclination. So we've got tan theta is a half. Therefore, your theta is going to be, and we're going to go shift tan. No, we're not. We're going to go right with just one theta. I want to clear this, so we're going to go shift tan of bracket 0.5 bracket equals 26.57 degrees. So that's going to be 26.57 degrees. Let's do another example. Now it says the line is passing through the points 2, 5 and minus 3, 2. Now grade 11s remember that when we are looking for the angle of inclination we are just using the fact that tan theta equals m. So we really don't care about the rest of this equation. All we care about is m. And we know that m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So therefore, if we let this be x1, and this be y1, and this be x2, and this be y2, then we can substitute in and get the gradient. So let's do that. So that becomes y2 is minus 2 minus y1 of 5 over minus 3 minus 2. So that becomes minus 7 over minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 which is just 7 over 5 and now we want the angle of inclination so we go tan theta is 7 over 5 and this time what do we need to get we need theta so we're going to go tan negative 1 of 7 over 5 and we're going to pop out our calculator and we're going to put it onto the side so we can see what we're doing and we can go shift tan bracket 7 divided by 5 bracket equals 54.46 degrees so therefore theta is equal to 54.46 degrees and grade 11's that's angle of inclination please go practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section have a lovely day